The investigation into former President Trump's attempted coup took a truly stunning turn this week when it was revealed that his own son, Don Jr., as well as several Fox News hosts, privately begged Trump's chief of staff to get Trump to stop the attack on the Capitol. And yet, in public, those same people defended Trump and lied about the insurrection. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. On Monday, on this very show, we did a closer look where we laid out everything we knew about the coup attempt that led to the January 6th insurrection and said that every time you think it can't get more shocking, it does. We taped that segment Monday afternoon, and before it even aired later that night, more shocking revelations emerged. Soon we're just gonna have to leave a space in the show where I move my mouth so we can digitally insert words later. You know, like this. Donald Trump held a seance at the White House to contact the ghost of Benjamin Franklin to ask him to overturn the election. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The investigation took yet another stunning turn this week when we learned that prominent Trump supporters on Fox News and even his own son, who have spent almost a year minimizing or lying to us about what happened on that day, were privately pleading with Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, during the attack to get Trump to put a stop to it and telling him what they actually thought of it, that it was really, really bad. The evidence that the January 6th committee laid out tonight against former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows was truly extraordinary. And it was all evidence that Mark Meadows himself turned over to the committee at his own will. That evidence showed that a slew of Fox News hosts from Laura Ingram to Sean Hannity were begging Mark Meadows to get Donald Trump to stop the siege, and he refused. Text messages to former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows from Donald Trump Jr., from Fox entertainers, from Trump administration officials, even from some lawmakers that all privately and for a time unsuccessfully beg to do something to stop the violence as the attack unfolded at the Capitol. Damn, they have Don Jr.'s text messages to his father's chief of staff, which means Don Jr. doesn't have his father's own phone number? <laughs> and if Don Jr. gets relegated to the chief of staff, who does Eric have to go through? Rudy? My father has to make a speech. New phone, feds took old one, shrug emoji, who dis? Eric, Eric who? Eric Trump? No way, I have a friend named Donald Trump. That's my father. Oh wow, can you get me his number? Whatever else we find out about the actual text, there's nothing more embarrassing than not having your dad's number. That would be like if I only communicated with my dad through Wally. Oh, by the way, Wally, uh, what did he think of the show last night? Did he say anything else? Seth, I just print what he tells me. All right, man. <laughs> Even Kendall Roy gets to talk face to face with Logan, although it's usually just something like, uh, <laughs> Dad? <laughs> I've been doing that impression for like three months now, and I feel like it gets marginally better every time. <laughs> I did it on this show for the Brian Cox, who plays Logan, and the nicest thing he could say about it, and this is verbatim, was that it was, quote, incredibly brief. But I took that as a challenge, and I think now I can stretch the impression out. Here's my Kendall Roy if he was planning the Capitol insurrection. I say we storm the place, go full Visigoth, you know, ancient Rome, end of the world, get some Silicon Valley, Valley tech, generate some social buzz for us, maybe a big with a Viking helmet and a fur hat, get in there and jack a podium or some, make it or conic, I don't know, whatever. What do you say, Greg? Uh, wow, it uh seems. It seems great, but uh, also maybe illegal. And um, Tom said that if I uh, get involved in anything uh, extrajudicial, um, he would make me uh, eat a big bucket of <laughs> So it turns out a bunch of Fox News hosts and Trump's own son sent urgent pleading text messages to Trump's chief of staff as the insurrection was unfolding, begging him to tell Trump to do something about it. And just so you know, I don't text or communicate in any way with politicians, but if I did, it would be to tell Chuck Schumer to push his glasses up. <laughs> I don't care how salient a point you're making, my man. When those bad boys are dangling on your nose tip, all I can think is they're gonna fall off and he's gonna need to buy a new pair of glasses. <laughs> but the bombshells kept coming when Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney read the text during a hearing on whether to hold Meadows in contempt on Monday. According to the records, multiple Fox News hosts knew the president needed to act immediately. They texted Mr. Meadows, and he has turned over those texts. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us, 
He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Please get him on TV, destroying everything you have accomplished, Brian Kilmeade texted. Quote, can he make a statement, ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. As the violence continued, one of the president's sons texted Mr. Meadows, quote, he's got to condemn this ASAP. The Capitol Police tweet is not enough, Donald Trump Jr. texted. Man, what else was in those messages? Is there a text from Kilmeade asking Mark Meadows, on Fox and Friends, am I one of the friends or am I the Fox? <laughs> also, were you all really shocked that people were violently storming the Capitol? You're the ones who told them the election was stolen. Hannity was even saying that on the night of January 6th. 83% of Republicans, almost 30% of independents, millions of Democrats that saw irregularities and their strong belief the election was in fact fraudulent. Our election, frankly, was a train wreck. 80%, 83%, according to Gallup, of Republicans and millions of others do not have faith in these election results. You can't just snap your finger and hope that goes away. Make no mistake, there were serious election irregularities. We've got to address them in state after state after state. Why? Because as a country, we can't have 83% of one party, 30% of independents not having confidence in the election result. Because you told them that. You can't complain about how the subway smells when you're the guy that took on the F train. <laughs> I'm a, I think I might ask for a refund. You guys fed them lie after lie about election fraud, despite the fact that there was zero evidence to back it up. They lost more than 60 court cases, including in front of Trump-appointed judges. The two-step these guys tried to pull off with telling their viewers there was fraud when claiming we have to investigate that made-up fraud because their viewers believe there was fraud is honestly insulting to everyone's intelligence. That's the logic of parents who tell their kids there's a monster under their bed who will come out at night and eat them if they don't brush their teeth, then complain that their children don't want to go to bed. Look, man, you don't have to worry. I told you, if you brush your teeth, he won't eat you. Yeah, but he's still a monster. I mean, maybe he doesn't play by your rules, Dad. <laughs> Plus, he's got to eat something, right? He's just going to go hungry all night because I brush my teeth? I feel like your theory is a little shaky at best. Oh, my God, go to bed! Also, I can't believe they naively thought they could actually get Trump to go on TV and condemn the insurrection he himself whipped up. And in the end, of course, he ignored them. All they could get him to do was shoot one of those weird videos in the White House Rose Garden where he looks like he's hosting a show on Animal Planet exploring the Australian bush. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone, to Wild Adventures. We're here looking for the rare, long-footed potaroo. And, oh, would you look at that? There's a uh, press secretary hiding in the bushes. <laughs> look at that, Sean Spicer, old uh, spizzer over there. That one's a, a joke from our recurring segment. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that? When the press secretary hid from reporters in the bushes like a high school sophomore who just left a flaming bag of dog turds on his neighbor's doorstep? <laughs> oh, he sees us, run! This has been Remember That. <laughs> it's surprising to think that even as close as these people are to Trump, they still don't know the real him. You think he wanted to go on TV and condemn his own supporters. By all accounts, he was watching the riots on TV, and according to one Republican senator, he was excited and delighted by what he saw. The Washington Post reported that Trump was too busy watching fiery TV images of the crisis unfolding around them to act or even bother to hear their pleas. He was hard to reach, and you know why? Because it was live TV, said one close Trump advisor. If it's TiVo, he just hits pause and takes the calls. If it's live TV, he watches it, and he was just watching it all unfold. Someone out has to teach him how to use a DVR. I mean, you can pause live TV now. Can we get a Verizon technician over to Mar-a-Lago? All right, you're all set, sir. And now can I talk to the people on the little screen? Nope, nope, they're, they're on TV, so they can't hear you. Okay, but just in case they can, is Brian Kilmeade one of the friends or is he the fox? <laughs> so what were you saying? Uh, so now uh, what these Fox hosts were saying privately about what happened, sorry. So now what... Wally? Wally, do you know it's wrong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we what these. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this technical solution. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, two finger Wally to the rescue. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
maybe my dad's next message will be for you. <laughs> so now what these Fox hosts were saying privately about the reality of what happened on January 6th. In public, though, on their TV and radio shows, they repeatedly went to great lengths to minimize it, to amplify the lies about election fraud that motivated it, and even suggest that there may have been other elements, like Antifa, involved in the riot. The FBI will infiltrate groups, whether it's the mob or al-Qaeda, and they'll try to be one of them and f unwind a plot before it takes place. Right. Do you think maybe, perhaps, and maybe you don't want to give away your series, you find indications that the FBI was actually pushing for this invasion? And yep. we had the reports that groups like Antifa, uh, other radical groups, I don't know the names of all of them, that they were there to cause trouble. Earlier today, the Capitol was under siege by people who can only be described as antithetical to the MAGA movement. Now, there were likely not all Trump supporters, and there are some reports that Antifa sympathizers may have been sprinkled throughout the crowd. Ah, uh, yes, Antifa was sprinkled throughout the crowd. When you say it like that, you make it sound so warm and cozy. Are you describing a riot or serving eggnog at a Christmas party? And if you notice, there's some cinnamon sprinkled throughout, just like Antifa at the insurrection. We all saw what happened on TV with our own eyes that day. We even did a live show that night because we didn't know what the hell was gonna happen. Had we taped that show in the afternoon, we definitely would have had to digitally insert something like this. <laughs> so anyway, the point is, these people all knew how dangerous the situation was, but in public, since then, they've defended Trump while downplaying it, minimizing it, or outright lying about it. All of this answers what I like to call the Costanza question. George Costanza, of course, famously said this. It's not a lie if you believe it. But they didn't believe it. Their texts show they were lying and they knew they were lying, which means they're worse than George Costanza. That's right, they're Newman. <laughs> of course, if Congress got its hands on George's text, he'd freak out too. Jerry, they got my text! You were texting? I was tapping and typing and jiffing and riffing, baby. Well, you jiffed and you riffed, and now they're miffed. <laughs> this latest bombshell is so revealing in so many ways. For one thing, Trump's closest allies were pleading with him to put a stop to the violence, and he refused. For another, they were honest and private about how bad it was, while in public defending Trump and lying about what happened. And they're also the ones who spread the big lie about the supposedly stolen election to begin with. To borrow a phrase, Republicans, if you had a conscience at all, you'd see all the evidence and... Condemn this... ASAP. This has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.